Opiates are analgesics, so painkillers, and the main ingredient of opium is morphine. Morphine is naturally obtained from the opium poppy plant, but it can also be synthesized in the lab. Morphine and codeine are both examples of opiates, and these are strong analgesics. What are strong analgesics? Uh, these bind to opioid receptors in the brain and suppress the transmission of pain impulses to the brain. So this is how they function. This is how they act as painkillers. Strong analgesics are given to relieve severe pain caused by injury, heart attack or diseases such as cancer. In small doses, they do not affect the central nervous system, but in high doses, they can affect the brain, leading to drowsiness, confusion, respiratory depression that can also lead to asphyxia. Opiates are also known as narcotic analgesics and in high doses, they can cause a feeling which um, is called euphoria, where the person has the impression that all distresses have been relieved. But this can also lead to dependency and addiction. So for these reasons, opiates are only available on prescription and their usage is monitored through medical supervision. The advantage of using morphine for pain relief is that it is a strong analgesic, which means that it produces relief from acute or extreme pain. They have wide therapeutic window. This means that the drug is safe. They can relieve anxiety, induce relaxation, or improve the quality of life. Some people take it uh, when they have problem of sleeplessness. And they can also be administered intravenously, which will give faster distribution of the drug. The disadvantages of using morphine for pain relief include addiction, but also as the person are under the influence of the drug, they can lack self-control and indulge in dangerous behaviors. The user will also build up tolerance to the drug, which means that every time that the drug is consumed, higher and higher doses will need to be taken in order to feel the same effect, which increases the risk of overdose or upon prolonged use. There is also kidney or renal failure due to overuse. And there is also risk associated with intravenous drug administration. Now, structure of opiates. These are several opiates available. You have morphine, codeine. Codeine is normally used in cough syrups. You have dimorphine, which is the very common drug heroin. And then you have Demerol. This is a synthetic opiate. Now, from morphine, you get codeine or heroin. Codeine is a safer version of morphine. Heroin is a more dangerous version of morphine. And Demerol is a synthetic version of the drug. Now, if you look at all these opiates, if you look at the structure of all these opiates, all of them have this group. This is the active constituent of all opiates and you will see this everywhere. So you see this here, you see this here, and here, and here. The other side chains can be different but they all have this same constituent. It is this active constituent that gives the opiates its properties. So you have a six-membered ring here and this is called a tertiary amine group. So you have nitrogen bonded to free group. So it's called tertiary amine. Now the differences between the structures, if you notice morphine, it has two OH. These are hydroxyl groups. Here you have a benzene ring. Over here, the double bond, this is an alkene. And this part.
part here. This is called an ether, ether group. Now, if you look at the structure of codeine, you will also see the alkene present here. You will also see the hydroxyl. You will see the benzene ring. You will also see the ether here. But the only difference here is that here you have two hydroxyl groups, but over here you have only one hydroxyl group. And this is also an ether group. If you now look at the structure of heroin, heroin also has the active constituent. It will also have the alkene, the benzene ring, the ether, but it has two different groups here as compared to morphine. These are ester groups. And if you look at the structure of synthetic opiate, you can also see here you have the benzene ring, but that's the only thing that's common. You don't have any alkene or you don't have hydroxyl groups, but what you have here is an ester group. And of course, you have the active constituent.